Welcome to Preparing the Way, where we're preparing the way for the imminent return of our Lord Jesus Christ in repentance, preaching holiness, righteousness, and truth. My name is Len LaCroix, and I'm your host for this broadcast. I'm a preacher and missionary to Eastern Europe with Dulas Missions International. And joining me today as my guest is Dennis LaCroix, who uh, is the lead financial assistant for Dulas Missions International. And uh, Dennis <clears throat> is a, uh, a brother in Christ who has been serving the Lord now uh, and was the first person that God used to uh, bring into the kingdom through me. So I'm really happy to have you on the program today, Dennis. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Len. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. So, um, Dennis, before I get into talking about myself and, uh, and talking about Dulas Missions International and, and this program and everything, I wanted to ask if you'd like to take a moment just to introduce yourself uh, in a moment. I'm going to say a couple of words, first of all, about our other guests that were supposed to be here, but I want to ask you if you would prepare to just say a couple of, uh, a few things, you know, for maybe five minutes about yourself, whatever you feel led to say about uh, your coming to Christ, your walk with God, and <laughs> what the Lord has done in your life. Uh, but before that, I just want to say that Andrew Stenhouse, Dr. Stenhouse was supposed to be here today as our guest. He's the president of uh, Dulas Mission International, and I've known him now for uh, since the early 90s. And uh, he was our honored guest that was supposed to be here along with Dennis, and is not. Uh, he's under the weather today. So uh, we're praying for him to feel better, and yes. we trust that God's going to touch him and heal him and he'll be able to join us next time. But for today, uh, I'm so glad to have you here, Dennis, and uh, you're an important part of our lives and an important part of our ministry. So would you say a few words about yourself and just, you can, you know, speak uh, to me, but about who you you are and what God's done in your life. Oh, certainly, I want to thank you again for, for having me this afternoon. Uh, basically, the, as you know, the, the Lord, uh, through... Um, through his Holy Spirit, uh, I asked Jesus Christ into my life uh, when I was a freshman in high school um, and grew uh, to be uh, a disciple of his word, and I attended uh, Christian college. I was married, uh, but not long after that, due to some circumstances in my life, some trials and tribulations, uh, the enemy really used those, and he caused a, a gap of separation between the, the Lord and myself, and I had fallen away for uh, quite a few decades. Uh, mm. and the, the story, the story parallels, you know, uh, many of many of the gospels of uh, that comes to mind of the prodigal son, and that you know the Lord had given me a taste, a sweet taste of His truth and His love, uh, and, and I squandered that. You know, I had fallen away. I went off on my own uh, to fulfill the dark, you know the desires of the flesh. Uh, yeah. and, you know, really went in some dark places, uh, but as well as the story of of the good shepherd that uh, that came out to on the rocky ledge for that one that got away. Uh, that's where I had found myself uh, with the intercession of many believers, such as yourself and your family and many others, uh, that prayed on my behalf mm -hmm. and through the grace grace and mercy of God, uh, Jesus Christ came out to that ledge uh, in my time of need. Uh, he brought me back into the fold, into the flock, I want to say about four, uh, a little over four years ago. Uh, and it has been since then that I don't think I've had a deeper, uh, not only a commitment, but he's taken me into a deeper uh, relationship you know, with him, um, and has just really matured me. He's delivered me from uh, many deceptions and lies and condemnations of the enemy, uh, and he's just really just opened up the heavens and all he would have me to know and to do for uh, for his glory. Yeah, amen. I'm, I really have seen a change in your life, too. I mean, I, I saw it uh, when you first came to Christ back in the 80s, and... Uh, you know, of course, it was painful to see you away from the Lord all those years, but now that you're back with him, um, it's very, very clear that God is the center of your life and that, that you're serving Jesus Christ, and it's evident in your, your joy and in your peace that you have and uh, in your love for others and the way you're letting your light shine. So praise God for what he's done in your life. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. Uh, 
So is there anything else that you feel led to say about yourself? Um, you've just joined our ministry now uh, a month ago as our lead financial assistant, so I could mention that. We really appreciate you joining up with the team. And it seems like, you know, I was thinking recently about how way back when you first came to the Lord, you were thinking that you might uh, be a missionary with us overseas someday, and uh, or with me overseas someday, and now here you are part of the ministry. So I think God, you know, has a, a way of bringing things around and fulfilling His divine purposes. Amen. I, I completely agree with that. I think, you know, a lot of the times when we look for the giftings uh, of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, we would think of, of those out on the pulpit, uh, or like yourself and your family out on the mission field, um, perhaps uh, gifting it into prophecy, uh, and healings, but a lot of times, uh, you know, God has giftings that are behind the scene, and he has really uh, given me the ability of, of administrative uh, uh, tasks, uh, and that is, that's what he is using me. He's humbly put me in a position to come on board uh, with your ministry um, for the talents that he's given me, and, you know, we've just kind of partnered up uh, with that, and uh, I just want to be faithful to all that he would have for me, and just watch how he continues to use you. Uh, in Eastern Europe uh, and all that uh, he would have you to do uh, to uh, reach disciples and to train up uh, disciples in Eastern Europe. Amen. And speaking of making disciples, you know, there might be someone, Dennis, who's listening today. I'm thinking they may have heard your testimony and just be feeling like, you know, I'm that person that came to Christ at one time and I've wandered away. And if that's you out there, you know, listening to this program or listening to a, an archive version of this later, if you're listening to this and, and you're away from, from Christ right now and you're feeling condem condemnation on you, you're feeling uh, that you've gone too far, you've, you've just sinned too much and God would never take you back. He would never uh, forgive you for the things that you've done. I've seen so many people who feel like that, and I want you to know something. That Jesus said, all the sins and blasphemies of men shall be forgiven them, except for the blasphemy of the Spirit. That is the only eternal sin. Everything else, God will, can forgive you of if you will sincerely repent. And I'm not talking about playing games with God and saying that you repent when you really aren't sorry and then just going right back to what you're doing. I'm talking about if you really want to come back to the Lord, you put yourself before Him, get on your knees, and lift up your hands to God and cry out to Him and repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Leave your life of sin. Amend your ways and give your life back to God. Ask Him to take you back. Ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you and wash you clean and commit yourself firmly and truthfully to serving him for the rest of your life and he will turn your life around because he saves from the guttermost to the uttermost um, it doesn't matter where you okay I backslid for a period of time for a few months after I came to know the Lord and I'll tell you that uh, God took me back and, and cleaned my life up even though I had gone right back down into the, the, the gutter where I had been so if that's you I want to encourage you right now to to give your life back to Jesus. He loves you and he wants you back. He doesn't want you to stay there. Don't let the enemy deceive you into hell thinking that you are eternally condemned, that you have to stay there. So we're going to talk more about the, the Lord here throughout this program and uh, that's what we're all about. But And I'll be sharing my testimony in a few minutes as well. Uh, but I really appreciate you just taking time to introduce yourself, Dennis, and we're going to move on now and, and really launch the new radio program. This is our first program, for uh, per, our first Preparing the Way program, which is a new radio uh, broadcast, a ministry of Dulas Missions International, which I'll just call DMI for short. So we'll tell you about DMI in this program today, as well as about ourselves as missionaries and the purpose for this radio program. So let's just begin with my story. And I'll just give you a, a brief thumbnail of how I came to know Christ. I was raised in a very religious family. We were devout Catholics, and I, I love my mom and dad uh, who raised me uh, and taught me about Jesus. But we were Catholic, and as such, I did not have a personal relationship with the Lord. I knew all the facts about him, 
but I didn't know him personally. And I didn't really know the difference between the two. So I was going along being very devout in my religion. And as I became a teenager, it became very evident that the sins of my youth were only getting bigger. And anything that was in my life before that was growing like like uh, the same way that a little bit of yeast causes the bread to rise in the oven. And when I became a teenager, that's when everything really came out very publicly in terms of my sin. For one, I began smoking cigarettes when I was 12 years old. That's pretty young. At least it was back in the 70s uh, for um, a child to be smoking at that age. And then I started uh, drinking alcohol when I was 13 started smoking marijuana right about the same age, 13, 14. And I just continued right on with all those things and right on into debauchery and everything that's connected with that kind of a lifestyle uh, all throughout my teenage years. And although I really kept it hidden mostly from my parents and maintained good grades in school, I was known as a party animal. And I was a you know, rebellious, wild teenager doing things I shouldn't have done. And I went off into the Army in that condition. And while I was in the Army down at Fort Benning, Georgia, as a young infantryman, 19 years old, after a year and a half in the Army, I was farther into sin than I'd ever been. I was in darkness, in bondage of all kinds, because now I had nobody to look over my shoulder, nobody to give an accounting to. I was no longer even attending church. I was just away from God. And I became friends with a Buddhist guy named Leonard, same name as me. But this guy was raised by Buddhists, and he began to share with me. He was a fellow soldier who was sharing with me about his beliefs. So we would do drugs together, and he was telling me about what he believed, that God was perfectly good and perfectly evil, and that Satan and Jesus are brothers, and all kinds of lies like that that he believed in. And I was... I'm, I'm, I was very fascinated by these things, especially under the influence of drugs, and began to ponder them. And one day I was sharing these things with a friend of mine while we were standing in formation there in front of the barracks, whose name was Alan from California, another fellow soldier. This guy had recently given his life to Jesus, and I didn't know that. So I'm sharing with Alan about what Leonard was telling me, how God is perfectly good and perfectly evil and Satan and Jesus are brothers. And Alan just chuckled and said, <laughs> you're searching for Jesus. And I said, I'm not searching for Jesus. I was so serious because I figured I know the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer. I could, you know, I read my Bible and, uh, and could tell you all the historical facts about Jesus, but I didn't know him personally yet. And... Alan said, well, don't take my word for it. You've been deceived by other people before about God. Why don't you, do you have a Bible? Yes. Why don't you take your Bible and blow the dust off of it? And he was right because it wasn't being read. And he says, this time, before you read it, though, open it up and pray and ask God to show you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That really stuck with me, Dennis, because I knew that in a court of law we trust human beings to put their hand on a Bible and say that, and then we expect them to tell the truth. And how much more will God, when we ask him? I knew that the God I really believed in, in my heart of hearts, would not lie to me. So I began on that quest, praying that way, reading the Bible, and he opened my eyes up and showed me that the way I was living was not right. I knew I had to get my life right with God and that I was not pleasing to him. I was walking in sin. This became evident to me as I opened the word and prayed for the truth. And I thought I was searching for information, but you know, the truth is not just information. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man Hallelujah. comes to the Father except by me. And so that was a revelation for me, Dennis, because, you know, I always thought that I never realized the truth was a person. And when... I began to talk to God and say, okay, God, what should I do? Should I go back to the Catholic Church or should I become like Alan? What do you want me to do? I know I need to get my life right with you. And I sensed in my heart still small voice saying, I don't want you to go back to the Catholic Church. You know, God's not looking for us to just get religion or become religious. He wants a relationship with us. 
And he also didn't tell me to go and become like Alan because God is not looking for cookie cutter Christians to copy some other Christian and you know uh, try to be like them. So I went and found Alan, gave my life to Jesus. That was February 13, 1986, about 27 years ago now. And my life changed. God set me free from drugs. He set me free from alcohol. He set me free from the foul language and all the immorality that I was living in and the, the filth that was in my life from the top of my life to the bottom. I was full of filth and all the rotten things I'd ever done to people to hurt them and damage their lives so terribly. God wiped and washed all that away through the blood of Christ and cleansed me and it was like someone just took a slate or you had written on it and just wiped it clean. I started off with a clean I was like a newborn baby. I mean, I was really starting life over, Dennis. I remember how I felt so much joy inside, so much peace, all that shame that I had walked around with from the sins of my youth, all the guilt that I was carrying on me all those years that was weighing so heavy. It was gone now, and I was free, and I no longer had to sin. I wasn't in bondage to just keep saying, you know, confessing, and, and, and then repeating the sin and confessing it and repeating it over and over in this endless cycle. But now he broke me free from that. He gave me power over sin through the cross. And from there, it was like I began to see the sky for the first time. It was so blue, I never realized how blue the sky was until then. It was like scales had been removed and the grass was so green. I could hear the birds tweeting and I knew that they were praising my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I began people around me about Jesus and the good news that they could be saved too and have what I had. So I was telling people whether they, you know, accepted him or not, some people just told me off, you know. But I wanted everyone to know. And I, and I went over to uh, Eastern Europe uh, where the Army sent me out to Berlin as a reconnaissance scout. And that was in 1986. I ended up over in Berlin, which back then there was East Germany was, was communist. And inside of East Germany, 120 miles behind the uh, communist lines was Berlin. And inside Berlin was where I was stationed. It was a modern uh, city with all kinds of various types of cars, uh, stores, people dressed in colorful clothing, everything just like you would find in any modern Western city, you know? But on the other side of the wall, you would just look over, just like you look over your fence of your yard. You know what I'm saying? And right. it was black and white and shades of gray. And like going back in time 50 years. And I saw these, the communist soldiers guarding the people to keep them in the country and keep them from escaping. Barbed wire everywhere. Fences, dogs, guns just to keep people from escaping that kind of life. And God began to lay a burden on my heart to pray for those people. And I was one of many people at that time praying for the walls of communism to come down and for God to open doors for the gospel and to pour out his spirit behind the Iron Curtain so that many uh, people would come to know Christ and that revival would break out in that land and it would sweep across there and there would be a, a great harvest of souls. So I was joining my prayers with who, however, countless many around the world were praying, interceding by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I, I said to the Lord, right there in Berlin, in my prayer closet, that I will go wherever you tell me to go and do whatever you command me to do. That's what they told Joshua in Joshua 1.17. The Israelites said that to him. And I was praying that prayer to God, and I felt in my heart that I would go back to that part of the world someday. But I finished my tour of duty went on to prepare for Bible uh, for ministry through Bible school and graduate school, ended up meeting my wife Jennifer in uh, graduate school where we were both studying world missions at the master's level. I was concentrating on a focus of church planting within that uh, uh, major area of study. And then after uh, graduate school at Regent University, we got married up in New Hampshire, my home state, and I worked in the corporate world for a number of years just raising my family and serving in the local church in ways that God led me to serve that were maybe insignificant on to most people. But, you know, the Lord says, whatever you do for the least of these, you've done it for me. If you visit the sick, you've done it for him. If you feed the hungry, you've done it for him. If you visit those in prison, 
you've done it for Jesus. And so we were just doing whatever God gave us to do, preaching the word, sharing the gospel, and raising our family. And God was promoting me through the various levels of the organization I worked for. And over time, we were really getting uh, blessed in my job, and God was using it even for the gospel. And then there came a point where God brought me out of that. We always knew we were going to be sent out, but we wanted him to do it, and we waited all those years until from the time we were married in 1998, and really even from before that, from the time I was called into ministry in the 80s, waited until 2006. And it was then that God told us, it's time, if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. So I left the corporate world, and we talked to our elders. They agreed with us that this was the Lord's timing. And we sold our home just before the market crashed and sold our property, raised a fractional amount of the support we needed. The guy told us to go anyway, and we established Dulas Missions International for the purpose of helping leaders in Eastern Europe to be more effective at making disciples that will multiply and developing leaders that will multiply, which would ultimately lead to churches that will multiply. So. We established Dulas Missions International in 2006, and <clears throat> we, our board agreed unanimously that we should go, even though we only had a fraction of our support. We went with the word from Jesus saying, I will support you. Go, and I will support you. So we did, and after almost five years, we've just recently come back on our first family furlough last June, and we're here to seek the Lord for the strong backing that we need to continue the work in Eastern Europe, making disciples and teaching others to do so. So that's how DMI came to exist. It was my coming to the Lord and through my experience in Eastern Europe, and that's how we were sent out. Our local church in New Hampshire sent us out, just like in Acts chapter 13, where they, the Holy Spirit was the one that spoke, and they laid hands on Saul and Barnabas, and they sent them out with a word from the Lord to go and do the work that he had uh, commissioned them to do. So we went out, and we're here now, and uh, we've been in the States since last June. And I'd like to talk now about why we're launching this new radio program, because this is something fresh. It's something new that we haven't done before. And I always had a desire in my heart from the time I was a young Christian in the early 90s to have a radio program. And now the Lord has led us this way without really even consciously thinking that we were going to do it. And first of all, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back in this season. We all can see that, you know, with the signs of the times, can't we, Dennis? That's right. And that around us, I mean, it's very obvious. And he's doing, he's coming back just as he promised he would. We don't know what day. We don't know what hour he's coming. But we do know the season. He said that when you see these things happening, look up for your redemption draws near. And so we know, based on all the signs, <clears throat> that he's coming for his bride that is holy and righteous and without any spot or wrinkle. And what we're doing with this program is helping to prepare the bride. Like the scripture says in Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5, a voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You see, we've got to clear the way, don't we, Dennis, for the Lord? Yes. Because <clears throat> there's a lot of things that are in the way in our lives, in people's lives, that keep the Lord from coming back. And when he decides to come, he's going to come whether you're ready or not. What we need to do is get as many people ready as possible. And when the church is ready, then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. People will see the salvation of the Lord, like it says in Luke 3, 6. All flesh will see the salvation of God. Now, I'm going to move fairly quickly here because we've only got about four and a half minutes left, but I want to share a few more scriptures that are <clears throat> the foundation of why we're doing this program. And at a later time, we can always elaborate further, but these are the basis. The Word of God is our basis on which we stand. It says in Isaiah 40 also, get up. Get yourself up on a high mountain. Well, a radio program is kind of like that because you have a worldwide reach through the Internet. Get, up, get yourself up on a high mountain, O Zion, bearer of good news. Lift up your voice mightily, O Jerusalem, bearer of good news. 
Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. That doesn't take a lot of commentary to add to that. It's very clear what that's talking about, that Jesus is coming back with his reward with him, and he's going to recompense everyone for the deeds they've done while in the body, whether good or bad. He is God, and he's coming, and we need to bear the good news and tell everyone. It says, pass through, pass through the gates. You know, I got that word from the Lord years ago and didn't even know what exactly God was saying through that, but it goes on to say, prepare the way for the people. Build up. Build up the highway, remove the stones, raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to, the, to daughter Zion, see, your Savior comes. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. They'll be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you'll be called sought after, the city no longer deserted. You see, when people are prepared for the Lord to come, then they'll be called the holy people. But not when, the world, not when the church is living like the world, Dennis. When the people in the church are living just like the world, then there's really no difference between how can we call ourselves light if we look just like the darkness. The NIV says, lift up a standard over the peoples, Isaiah 62.10. Therefore, what we'll do on this program is we'll lift up heaven's standard of holiness, which the Lord requires. And it says in Malachi 3, Behold, I'm going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? You know, there's going to be a lot of people that will hang their heads, and they won't be able to look up at him when he comes, because they'll know, that even though they had given their life to Jesus, that they've been living in sin practicing lawlessness. It says, For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He'll sit like a, as a smelter and purifier of silver. And he'll purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. And that's what God is doing today in his church around the world. He's sending his holy fire and he is purifying the church. He's purifying for himself a people that will be holy unto him so that we may be pure through and through and we might present ourselves as an offering to the Lord. So through this radio ministry, we'll be preaching the word, sharing testimonies of what God is doing, and sounding the alarm for the people to get ready for the Lord's return. The Lord is saying, prepare for departure, because very soon the saints that are ready will be going up in the rapture. So that's the purpose of the program, and that's really uh, all we have for today. We're going to be wrapping up in about... Um, about one minute. And uh, I just want to give you a moment to ask if you had anything to, to add or comment. I know I had to run through those fairly quickly because we ran out of time, but was there anything you wanted to say uh, in the next few seconds, Dennis? Well, I absolutely agree with you, brother, that we are definitely uh, in, the, in the season. Uh, the end of times it couldn't be more of a proclamation through what God is doing, not only uh, through the heavens and in the skies. Uh, you don't have to turn through many uh, news channels to see uh, yeah. you know, that this nation is just heading into uh, just a moral uh, starvation and spiritual uh, starvation. And we just really need to, to tell the ones that uh, will listen, uh, open the eyes of the blind, uh, to really and get out, to, you know, that the Lord, the Lord is coming soon. And uh, we've got to put away these childish things that we have the comforts of the world and all that Satan would to us off. that's all we have for sure. today thank you very much for joining us and please join us again next Tuesday at, uh, at noon eastern time until then watch and pray and keep looking heavenward for your redemption draws near it's even at the door